Hey everyone, welcome back to The Tune Project. And if it's your first time here, welcome. I'm so excited to share this video with you today. If you do find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to The Tune Project, go ahead and click that red subscribe button below and be sure to click the bell as well so that you can stay up to date every single time I post a new video. And I realized that I never really talk about my Instagram on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested, I do have an Instagram called the Tune Project and I'll leave it down here. But if you're interested in hearing more from the Tune Project, go ahead and follow me over there. I post video updates on my most recent videos and also when I perform I post just little behind the scenes of the shows that I play and things like that. So lots of fun stuff going on over there if you want to check that out. Today we're talking all about tuning and one simple trick that you can use to know if the notes that you play are perfectly in tune. A lot of times, unless we have perfect pitch, which, let's be real, most of us do not, or unless we have a trained ear, then it can be really difficult to know if the notes that we play are perfectly in tune. We might be able to hear to an extent that something's not quite right, but we might not necessarily know how to fix it. So what I'm going to share with you today is how you can check to see if certain pitches are in tune or not, and how to correct that immediately. So with the violin, we have an advantage of our strings being tuned in fifths. So what that means is we can actually play an octave between two strings. So it does require playing a double stop, but I'm going to show you exactly how to play octaves on each of our strings. If I already lost you and you're unsure of what an octave is, let me quickly explain. So an octave is a set of eight notes. So think of a scale. If we're playing a G major scale, we would start from the lowest G, in this case being the open G string, to the next highest G, which would be our third finger on the D string. With that in mind, we can play our open G and our third finger G, and it's the same note. Even though it's not the same pitch, it is the same note, they're just an octave apart. So we have our lower octave G and our higher octave G. Now, if your third finger is in tune, then you should be able to hear a slight resonance with your open G string. It should resonate and vibrate just a little bit more, and that's how you know that your third finger is in that sweet spot. But in the case of really checking our tuning of our third finger to make sure it's placed in the correct spot for that G note that we're looking for, we want to play the two strings together at the same time. So yes, that requires us playing a double stop. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So we take our open G, play it. We take our third finger G, play that and then we play them together at the same time. Okay, so notice how they match up. Everything is in sync. You can hear that they're balanced. That's how you know that your third finger is in tune. Now, if for whatever reason you're playing a scale or something else and you notice that maybe you're not sure whether your third finger is in tune or not, that G you just played doesn't maybe doesn't sound quite right, well, you can check it, and I'm gonna play, just as an example, I'm gonna play my third finger G a little bit flat. Okay, and now if we use that trick that I just mentioned where we play it against open G, this is how that would sound. So you can hear that there's a lot of dissonance happening, it's clashing, there's a lot of beats within the sound wave. So what we wanna do now is we want to adjust that third finger. And automatically you can hear that everything was locking into place and those two pitches were coming together really nicely. Now, because we have the same situation happening with the D string and the A string, we can also use both of those pitches as well to check to see if we're in tune. So if I were to play my open D and then my third finger D on the A string, and I wanted to check to make sure that my third finger was in the right spot. I just play those two strings together. And voila, we're good to go. You know that you can move on because you're in tune. Same thing with the A string. 
as long as your open A is in tune, we place our third finger on the E string. And then we play the two together. And there we go. Everything is balanced and good to go. So what we want to do, I know what I just showed was kind of a more quick example of that, but when you're actually working on intonation, practicing, making sure that your pitch is correct and everything is in tune, you want to slow your bow speed down just to make sure that you're really hearing the purity of both of the strings so that the true pitch can really come through and you can pinpoint that pitch. So slow bow and also use a minimum amount of pressure as well. We don't want to be really pushing into the strings. We want the bow to be evenly distributed on both of the strings and also be just kind of playing on the surface because otherwise sometimes when we press too hard into the strings it can actually alter the pitch to where they can become sharper and that's not really something that we want in this case especially since we're working with intonation so we want to use a slow bow and a minimum amount of pressure <laughs> And it might take a couple of bows, if you're not used to playing double stops at all, it might take a couple of bows until you're able to completely balance the bow hair on both of the strings, but that's totally fine. Take your time, just be patient with it. So that was my little octave trick for being able to tell if your octaves are in tune. So at this point, some of you might be saying, well, Lauren, you know, you're only giving me two notes out of an entire scale to check the intonation of. What about all the rest of the notes? And my answer to that would be when we're playing a scale, we're relating every note to each other. Okay, so we're not just playing one note at a time and then forgetting completely what the previous note sounds like. So we're thinking of everything in context and in relationship to one another. So if you have one note that's in tune, let's say the G when we reach that octave, then you can listen for that next A. You can listen for the B in relation to the A and kind of start to learn those distances and those finger patterns. And because of this, you start to learn the distances between your fingers, depending on the scale, the finger pattern, the key that we have, you start to learn the distances, whether it's a half step, whether it's a whole step. So yes, even though I'm giving you just the octaves, everything around those pitches relates back to the octave, relates back to the open string. And so in reality, you're training your ear, you're training your muscles to remember these things, to remember the placement, which in turn will correct your overall intonation and improve the quality of your playing. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comment section below if there's any other technique that you are curious about or wondering about. Maybe you've learned something and you want to kind of expand on that a little bit more. Let me know and I'd be happy to make a video on that. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Happy practicing!